there comes a time when a preparatory period is over. And we have to move from learning and growing to doing the very things that we said we wanted to do from the beginning. And it can be an intimidating process because we don't want to mess it up. But if we never step into it, how will we ever complete the amazing tasks that we wanted to go into in the first place? Well, this is where the people of Israel are at as they are continuing in their building of the tabernacle. We've gone from all the instructions and all the gathering of the materials to actually doing it, to actually moving to a place of corporate worship. And believe it or not, this affects us concerning our discipleship as well. We'll talk about that connection in just a moment as we continue our study in the book of Exodus. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications so that you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, everything about these chapters at the end of Exodus is the actual construction of the tabernacle itself. And yesterday we talked about the gathering of materials, and today we start the talking about the actual building of all of these structures that God has designed. And there might be a fearful expectation for the people involved because God says, I want you to do it exactly as I've said to do it. But the amazing thing is he says, I've given you the spirit of God that you might be able to do what I've tasked you with. And man, there's so much practical application for you and me as believers in Christ today. Let's take a look at this as we continue our study. When all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with ten curtains, they were made of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarns, with cherubim skillfully worked. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains to one another, and another five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain of the first set. Likewise, he made them on the edge of the outermost curtain of the second set. He made fifty loops on the one curtain, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. The loops were opposite one another, and he made fifty clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains one to the other with clasps, so the tabernacle was a single whole. He also made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. He made eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops on the edge of the outermost curtain of the one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the other connecting curtain. And he made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together that it might be a single whole. And he made the tent, for the tent, a covering of tanned ram skins and goat skins. Then he made the upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits was the length of the frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. Each frame had two tenons for fitting together. He did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. The frames for the tabernacle he made thus, twenty frames for the south side, And he made forty bases of silver under the twenty frames, two bases under one frame for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, he made twenty frames, and there are forty bases of silver, two bases under one frame, and two bases under the next frame. For the rear of the tabernacle westward, he made six frames. He made two frames for corners of the tabernacle in in the rear. And they were separate beneath, but joined at the top, at the first ring. He made two of them this way for the two corners. There were eight frames with their bases of silver, sixteen bases, under every frame two bases. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the tabernacle at the rear westward. And he made the middle bar to run from end to end halfway up the frames. And he overlaid the frames with gold and made their rings of gold for holders and for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold. 
He made the veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen with the cherubim skillfully worked into it. He made it. And for it, he made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, and he cast for them four bases of silver. He also made a screen for the entrance of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen embroidered with needlework, and its five pillars with their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and their fillets with uh, were of gold, but their five bases were of bronze. And so we begin to see the building of the tabernacle, the building of this outer court that goes all the way around that they're doing. There came a time where they had to, all the materials that they needed. They had all the knowledge that they needed for building this material, and it became the moment to say, let's start working on it. I mean, how exciting must it be that now that they're in the actual, not just the instructional phase and not just the gathering phase, now they're building it. They're going to see this place of worship where they're going to be able to gather together and worship God in community as he's commanded. You know, for you and me, we've been given a commission to worship God as well. And our commission in obedience to God is to go out and make disciples. And here's the exciting part of this commission. In much the same way, God has prepared us in the same way that he's prepared Moses and the Israelites for the building of this tabernacle to worship him. Let's check it out together. We see the commission given in Matthew 28. We quote it many times. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. You know, what's what's so funny is that you and I have been given a commission to make disciples. And yet most people in their lifetime don't make a disciple because they are always worried about messing things up. They're always worried that they don't know enough. They haven't learned enough. That that they might mess things up and make things worse, worse or drive people away. And yet we're called to do that much in the same way as the people of Israel were called to make the tabernacle to have a place of worship. We're called and commissioned to go out and make disciples. And that is an act of worship as believers in Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, we're told to teach them everything that Jesus has commanded them. In other words, to go back to the word of God and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Not just that he's died and rose again, but beyond that, to teach them to follow everything that he's commanded. So when we look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, we, we get a, a more assurance from God in much the same way that the people uh, of Israel got from God, saying that his spirit was among them. Let's take a look. It says this, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So we're given the same promises that God gave the Israelites. We're given, most importantly, that he is with us in this endeavor. And then the tools that he's given us to do are are sufficient for the job that he's tasked us with. So he gives the people of Israel, this is what you need to build my tabernacle exactly how I want it. And I've given my spirit to those who have the skills to go and build this. And for you and me as disciples, he tells us, I am with you so that you might be able to go and baptize and teach people to obey everything that he's commanded. And beyond that, we have the scripture with us that's breathed out by God that is profitable for this teaching and reproof and correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete and equipped. In other words, we have all the tools before us. We need to just step out in faith so that we can begin to build those disciples. And in much the same way, when we start building disciples out of other people, it's that same type of excitement that the people of Israel must have had for the tabernacle. They're finally going to see the completion of this place where they get to worship together. You and I get to see the completion of the Great Commission in our lives as we go out and step out in faith and realize God's already given us all the tools. We have the Spirit of God. in us. We have the Word of God with us, and it's sufficient to make complete and equip every person for their good work in Jesus Christ. 
man, if we just trust that, we'll build more disciples instead of being fearful that we're going to mess it up. The work is of God. The word is of God. His spirit is with us. We need to be obedient to the command. There comes a time where we need to stop planning and start working. My prayer is for you and me, that time is now. God bless you. Reach out to somebody else today who needs to be discipled in the Lord and begin to fulfill that commission in Christ because as you see them built up, you'll be encouraged as the people of Israel were when they were building up the tabernacle for them to worship God with. God bless you. I hope that helps you today and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.